Starting Overdrive. Real stories of starting over with Red Seaton. It seems like you really had a strong connection to starting over or reinventing yourself even before your success as a mentalist. I know that you toured across the country in a band in your late teens. Yeah. You were a model. You mentioned that you were a hairstylist at one point. Looking back now at those early days, was the process of starting over or reinventing yourself more a creative expression of who you were at the time? This is going to sound incredibly cheesy, but in my life, there's been a few things that people have said in passing that I ended up taking way too seriously. So I have these, before memes were a thing, they're just the quotes and expressions in my head. And I remember I was maybe a young teenager, 12 years old or 13 years old. My parents got divorced and I thought, well, who the hell am I going to be? I don't know who I am. So I've been kind of starting over since <laughs> before I was even a teenager. And I remember clearly somebody telling me a quote and it was something to the effect of the most powerful thing you can do is sacrifice who you are for who you can become. And I never forgot that. I've said that over and over. I don't know who said it. I should probably Google it now that we have the internet. I've just never bothered because it's it's been like almost my mantra. It's to sacrifice who you are for who you can become. And that's an incredibly valuable tool because initially you feel like, well, if I quit something, I've dedicated this much time into doing things this way or living my life this way. And if I don't keep going with it, I'm quitting and I'm losing all that time. But what if you're not on the right path? Remember I mentioned that river flowing. What if you're on the wrong river flowing? You know, like you're not the right thing. You've been wasting that time. So you should abandon that as soon as possible and get on to the right thing. And I think that that's true not only for your life path, but for relationships. People go, oh, I've been in a marriage for 10 years and I don't want to get divorced now because it'll, or leave now because it'll separate. And I understand that, that dedication. But at the same time, if that wasn't meant to be and you've been forcing destiny to go your way, then that's not a good thing. You know, you should, you're better off to do the other thing. So you have the choice and it's in your control, but people don't even realize sometimes that there could be a better or different version of themselves out there waiting because as beings, we're extremely complacent. That's a huge challenge that can really work against us. I don't think anybody wants to be happy in their life, like running around smiling and giggling happy. I think people just want to be at peace. And as long as people have a sense of peace and calm, there's no reason to walk the boat or to change anything or to start anything over because they'll just keep doing what they're doing until it doesn't work anymore. So my kind of philosophy is I haven't waited for things to collapse and have a catastrophic failure in my life. When I see an opportunity to look inside myself and say, is there a better part of you that you could express here or more of you to grow? I give that opportunity a chance and I say yes. And I think that that was instilled in me at a very young age. So I said yes to a lot of opportunities early on. And I was always very optimistic and seeing the bright side and all that kind of stuff. But starting over in career wise, I mean, I never thought I'd have a career. I mean, just a funny side note, I didn't have my driver's license until I was 35. I never had a car because I grew up, you know, struggling and, and everything. And so I just never bothered needing a car. When I started performing hypnosis, I got endorsed by Dream Limousine, a limo company. So they'd take me to all my shows where I could walk everywhere to the salon and where I worked. So I really didn't need a car. So I just didn't have one. And then after I got into TV and started finally making some money doing what I love, and thank God that I stuck with it because that's really the key to success that people don't know is people give up way too early. Mm -hmm. So anytime, even today, I get young people that I mentor asking me, do you think that I could really do this? If they have something, I will tell them, say, yes do it. And if anybody likes it, that's a good sign because if one person likes it, that means there's got to be more people out there that will like it. Maybe they'll pay for it and maybe you'll get some satisfaction in it. The roundabout way that I'm getting to, I think, trying to say is that you've got to be on target. You have to shoot for the bullseye of where your passion really is. That's what I've always done. I've always found where my passion is and I've stuck with that. Otherwise, people are going to universities, getting degrees and things that they hate doing and then dropping out and returning to their passion later in life or People are settling in relationships for people that they don't really love, and then they get divorced. And well, how do you break the cycle? I think you really have to meditate and look inside and find your center, your passion, and shoot for that, because that is where you're going to be successful. Not necessarily financially, like I mean... Internally. For me, definition of success is knowing that you're becoming the person you were meant to be. How do you know who you were meant to be? Well, that's a question that 
you've got to look inside yourself and find your true passion to find your bullseye and aim for that and never compromise. That's been kind of my rule. And that's what's made me overcome all the trials and tribulations that I've gone through. Thanks for listening to the Starting Overdrive podcast. Join us next time for another real story of starting over. In the meantime, make sure to follow us on Spotify, YouTube, Amazon, Stitcher, and all major podcasting platforms. Head to the Starting Overdrive Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to our channels, help us grow, and feel free to share your story of starting over. Or even let us know if you relate to any of the issues touched upon in our interviews. You can also find us at the Starting Overdrive podcast at the official site, www.startingoverdrive.com. Thank you.